Hi, I'm Andrew Beso and I'm here to share practical tips in order for you to write better essays and stories. Kung magsuscroll kayo sa YouTube channel ko and also on my blog, mapapansin nyo na ang content ko is mostly about essays and stories. And for someone who's been writing for 20 years now, I do have the simple rules that I rely on. This video is meant for students, beginners, and maybe for those who just want to learn how to write better. Take note, these are very basic tips lang ha. I think mas nakakalimutan kasi natin ituro yung mga basics ng isang skill in the most practical approach because we always assume that others already get it, that people know what we already know. Pero honestly, itong three tips na to na isi-share ko, walang nagturo sa akin ito. Hindi to naturo sa akin in a textbook or in school. These are things that I learned and consistently have noticed as I hone my writing. So itong three tips na to, you can keep this in mind as you are writing. So yung other aspects like how to start a good intro, how to make a convincing conclusion, or how to address writer's block, all of those things are topics that I can discuss in the near future. So isipin na lang para tong introduction, but what's so special here is I'm going to be teaching you and showing you the practical examples. As in, papakita ko sa screen yun how you're going to apply this in your writing. So without further ado, practical tip number one is describe it differently. Don't use the same word over and over again or kahit yung same variation niya. Do not be redundant. Well, bakit? Pag ganun kasi na same word lagi yung ginagamit mo, it sounds clunky. The reader is sensing that you have limited vocabulary and it suggests that you didn't even try to be creative. It just doesn't do well with the overall message of your written work. The obvious solution for this is to use a thesaurus, pero you don't want to overdo it. Don't use a totally unfamiliar or highfalutin synonym and you also don't want to just substitute the word with another. So my practical tip here is to find a way to describe the word, the feeling, the action, the very thing na gusto mo ilagay dun sa sentence mo. You can do this in phrases or even an entire sentence or maybe even a paragraph. It's like finding a new way of meaning the same thing without saying the same word. The question to ask yourself all the time is, is there a way for me to describe this differently? Here's an example. Maybe you're trying to write about Lenny Robredo and this is the sentence that you wanted to say, Lenny is the VP of the Philippines. Is there a way for you to say VP of the Philippines differently? It could simply be as Lenny is the second highest state leader. So that's a very simple way of saying it. So for example, itong sentence ito, she ran against Bong Bong Marcos. Can there be a way that you could say the same thing but using a different set of words? The very woman who ran against the late dictator's son. We all know that the late dictator's son is, of course, referring to Bong Bong Marcos, diba? What about this one? Sige. Lenny Robredo who won the VP race by a short margin. So, it's the same thing as saying na Lenny Robredo ran against Bong Bong Marcos. Um, so, the third sentence is basically inserting the idea that there was a very close call between the election run of Bongbong Marcos and Lenny Robredo and she won by a short margin. If you're trying to do a write-up of how good of a leader Lenny Robredo is, as I said earlier, don't just go into the thesaurus and find different synonyms of leader. So, sasabihin mo lang ba that Lenny is a good authority in the Philippines or Lenny is the Filipino's mother in a patriarchal society. I mean, that could be a different way of saying it, but you get my point. Maybe, instead of telling the readers that Lenny is a true leader, you could find different ways of demonstrating or showing it to the reader the kind of leadership that Lenny Robredo possesses. So, for example, this one. Lenny, more than being a mother of three daughters, became the refuge of those in the fringes of society. It's basically painting a picture that this is what true leadership looks like wherein you can represent all of the sectors in society. Or you could even tell a story of what true leadership is. So, may kita dito sa third sentence na to is, I contextualized it in a specific scenario where true leadership is emanating or true leadership is being defined. On the crucial calamitous night of November 17, where the office of the president was out of reach, Lenny Robredo and her team was the one helming the communication line. So, this one utilizes storytelling approach. You put in a specific situation where maipapakita mo sa mga readers kung ano bang ibig sabihin ng pagiging true leader. And you could use this in any of your essays. If you wanted to say something, find a different way, a word, a phrase, a sentence, or even a story that could mean the same thing. Practical tip number two, experiment with the structure. 
don't just use the same sentence structure. And by structure, I suggest tingnan mo yung mga ginagamit mong words, phrases, and clauses. Ano doon ang pwede mong ibahin? I-customize. Mapapansin mong boring or monotonous na yung write-up mo by simply using your eyes and ears. Do the sentences appear to have been using the same pattern repeatedly? Do they produce a seemingly similar sound over and over again? If the answer is yes, then maybe you can try to change their structure. What do I mean with this? Let's say you wrote this paragraph. Now, if you could notice, mapapansin nyo na it always has the same pattern, it always has the same sentence construction, mapapansin mo yun sa breathing of how simple or how bare the sentences are. It doesn't really show uh, a big effort to craft the sentence differently. Okay, now on this one, so mapapansin nyo dito, significantly, umikli yung paragraph, but I am still meaning the same thing. But as what you can notice here, I try to have different sentence structures. I try to utilize different punctuations to help me make the sound or the breathing. I don't know if you get what I mean about that, pero mapapansin mo yun on how you read your sentences. So, instead of writing multiple sentences, na paulit-ulit lang naman yung meaning, my writing could improve if I just combine all of this and specify that all, all of these are strategies that the troll armies are using. If you look back the previous example, ang dami kong sentences na ginamit, pero paulit-ulit lang naman yung message. So maybe I could condense it into just one sentence. And maybe instead of saying na, so, na maraming naniniwala sa kanila, maybe you could find an idiomatic expression that could say the same thing. So that's why I use this. And this is intentional. There are different idiomatic expressions that could mean that something is effective. But I wanted to use this kind of imagery to suggest the idea of consumption, the consumption of stories. So, mapapansin niyo sa dalawang version, one is verbose and longer, while the other is more concise and punchy. But they both say the same thing, di ba? This is where using different sentence structure or style can significantly improve your writing. And you can use different punctuations like the n-dash, m-dash, colon, semicolon, or even use a dialogue, itemize them, enumerate them, marami kang pwedeng gawing style. All of which, syempre, kailangan mo muna ma-familiarize ang sarili mo on how to use them accordingly. The last and the third practical tip is to let the words flow. I think this tip addresses the very common problem people encounter when they are trying to write an essay or a story for an assignment or maybe for leisure. We write and edit at the same time. Write and then edit. Write some more and edit some more. Write, 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 edit, edit, edit. Bawat sulat mo ng sentence or even just a few set of words pa nga lang, kinokorek or pinperfect mo na kagad. And that's why you never get things done. You become frustrated kasi di mo masulat tong sentence sa to ng maayos. So, you give up. Don't obsess on making it perfect the first time. Your first and primary goal when you're writing is to finish the draft. The draft. Just the draft. Not the final product. And sometimes the draft could be a very shitty outline and that's okay. You need to understand this. Drafts don't need to be perfect. They just need to be done. So let the words flow. Gawa ka lang na outline. Write down your initial thoughts. Kung di mo pa kaya ng English, itagalog mo muna. If di mo alam ko ano yung tamang word na smart sounding, just write the basic word na alam mo at babalikan mo yun later on. Kung puro questions lang tumatakbo sa isip mo, ilagay mo yung mga questions na yan. If ang naisip mo pa lang is yung conclusion, ilagay mo yung conclusion sa baba and you improve the writing as you go on. Because once you did all of these things, at the very least, meron ka isang draft na babalikan at taayusin. Kesa naman sa paulit-ulit mong pinaperfect at wala ka nang nagawa after how many hours of trying. For an example, well, I'm sorry, wala akong mapapakitang comparison right now, but I'm going to show you a draft and an outline of an essay that I'm planning to write. This is the first time that I'm going to do this, but you, the audience, will be my accountability partner. The examples about Lenny Robredo are not random, they are intentional. Because I plan to write a thought piece on the dirty attacks and politicking that the office of the vice president is experiencing. Question that I want to answer is, should Lenny Robredo start playing dirty? Now, what I'm going to show you is a rough outline. Labo-labo pa siya. You can hit pause to just read it. And I will be publishing the final and finished product on my Medium blog and also on my Instagram account on Wednesday, August 4. Of course, I'll be using the same tips that I just shared to you earlier. I needed more time to write this kasi syempre, this is a very serious topic. At ayoko namang pucho-pucho na ipapabasa ko. If I'm going to put something out there, I hope that it's going to contribute in the discourse. And of course, this requires a lot of thinking, a lot of research, at syempre may trabaho din ako. So, 
give me some time to write. So chill lang. Hopefully, you appreciate what you're going to read on Wednesday. But hey, I'll be posting polls on my YouTube channel and also on my IG and Facebook stories. You can share your answer there, yes or no. Lenny Robredo, is it about time for you to play dirty? I am Andrew Beso and my content is all about entertaining and educating the people. If you want to join me in this journey, do like and subscribe. And please follow and support me on all my other accounts. I regularly post content on TikTok, Medium, and on my Instagram account. And on YouTube, I upload at least one video every Friday. So thank you for watching. If you have something to share or better yet, if you have a useful skill, why not share it? Para sa bayan. Bye!